today I'm going to talk about Gandhi for us now. Gandhi, as young people understand by the photograph, is an old man with spectacles, half naked. But that's not the Gandhi, the old man I want you to remember. I just wanted you to remember a young Gandhi. And the image will come up, I hope, of the barrister Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. Because it is in the making of this man that we all want to understand whether he is relevant for us today. And that is the focus. Let me begin by reading the Supreme Court judgment of three lines that what is the crisis today? The crisis, one, there are two crises I'm going to talk about in this small time piece of 18 minutes. One is the crisis in character. And the Supreme Court judge delivering a judgment on a fraud case said, and I quote, if we desire to build a nation, the touchstone of ethics and character, and if our determined goal is to build a nation where only rule of law prevails, then we cannot accept the claim of appellants, which are students, for suggested social gains by allowing them to keep the medical degrees on the condition of doing social service free of cost for some years. In Madhya Pradesh, some students got medical admission by fraudulent means. They were caught and Supreme Court said take away their degrees and students appeal was to consider and allow them to practice after social service for few years. Concession. This is not the character. This is the loss of character. Untruth and manipulation is order of the day, whether this country or any other country. I am not generalizing. There are obviously very good people very honest and truthful people in minority. That is how we are facing this crisis of character. If you deeply reflect, this is the point which Mr. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, Bharat Law, was trying to understand from his childhood. Therefore, I want you to understand the story of Mohan. Because in every one of us, there is a Mohan. And we have just forgotten. I have just to awaken that Mohan in you. As a small young man, he objected to his mother who was very pious and religion and he loved and adored and had full faith in mother, but he didn't agree because she said, don't touch Uka because he cleans the toilets and untouchable. Young Mohan refused to do so. Today, still we have this problem. My young dear people, you should all reflect on that and embrace the entire humanity Mohan learned when he was less than five years old. Mohan grows up a little, looks at the, reads the Shravan Pitra Bhakti Natak and understands that the core of life remains in Seva, Seva of mother and father. And how many families are now breaking down? I don't have time to explain all that and you know already well. But the education has to be that which Mohan absorbs this is Mohan actually building his character. He reads and sees the play of Raja Harish Chandra. I don't have time to tell you to what Raja Harish Chandra story is, but everybody I hope knows. These days we have lost these stories. But Mohan plays the play in his mind because he doesn't have money to spend hundreds of times and doesn't believe that he is not going to be as beautiful, as truthful as Raja Harish Chandra because he knows that he is. But he asks a question, why everybody cannot be a Harish Chandra? In Gujarati, Badda Harish Chandra Kana Thai. That is the query of young Mohan. He is going up a little and ordinary boy. In the high school when the dictation is given, this boy does not know the spelling of kettle. Little difficult because it can be cattle as well. So he wants to spell cattle, he doesn't. An English inspector is in the school and the Indian teacher uses his boot to tell Mohan, copy from the next boy. Mohan refuses. He says, I never had any disrespect for my teacher, but I could not copy. He was called after the event and called as an idiot, but he said, 
it is better to be idiot than copy my dear young people and students how many of us have abstained from this inner greed to just copy and get few marks right this is the point mohan is building himself mohan is like all other boys and girls like all of us as i said mohan is in all of us but this mohan has if you call a habit mohan calling mohan remember karthik calling karthik so this is mohan calling mohan on every occasion mohan calls mohan and at the age of 15 he also is like other young people who want to free the nation of the english and he has a friend who says oh how can you do it look at english people so tall broad and strong you have to eat meat mohan is impressed he thinks we should eat meat so he can't eat meat at home because it's a mod baniya family so he still daily eats but then you have to steal for it his brother is involved finally there is a debt not small in those days of rupees 25 so lakshmi das his elder brother is wearing a golden bracelet and that is part of it is cut and sold mohan calling mohan kartik calling kartik he says i can't do this i have to admit this wrong to my parents and he decides it is better to give up meat eating now and eat later when parents are not there then to speak untruth to the parents and therefore he decides to acknowledge repent and willingness to accept punishment in english this doesn't sound very good i will tell in pure hindi gujarati which is bhul swikar paschataap ane prayaschit these are the three words which gandhi young mohan has imbibed in 15 years this society today please reflect society commits excesses on each other there is no bhul swikar there is no paschata let alone prayaschit but mohan has learned it not only then mohan conducts asahyog andolan in 1920 and chori chora happens people have gone and burnt the police station the entire country is up independence is just seen and that time mohandas karamchand gandhi who has already come back from south africa and become a mahatma recalls asahyog andolan people call him a fool they call it a political harakiri but he said no untruth is untruth a wrong is wrong india's independence can wait for 20 years but if i think that my people have not understood ahimsa non violence then we we are not fit to get independence now this is the mohan this is the determined mohan who at the age of 19 goes to so england to study the mother is worried why women and meat this is the worry so he gives wow to his mother that i will not touch wine women and meat and in the ship itself people say oh what is this gentleman you don't know you are going to england we also have promised our mothers that we are not going to eat meat not going to drink break it and come back and tell your mother that you have not done anything how many of us do it today it's okay our friends say lagao don't worry don't tell the parents mohan doesn't budge 19 year old boy goes hungry and in this hunger for one and a half months half filled stomach unless until he hits a vegetarian restaurant in farringdon street and eat to the food this is mohan and it is this mohan who travels to south africa and is thrown out of the train this character full mighty character at the age of 24 when he is out of thrown out of the train compartment says i began to think of my duty should i fight for my rights or go back to india or should i go on to pretoria without minding the insults 
and return to India after finishing the case. It would be cowardice to run back to India without fulfilling my obligation. The hardship to which I was subjected was superficial, only a symptom of deep disease. I should try if possible to root out the disease and suffer hardship in the process. Suffering hardship in the process is the key that he learns and teaches the entire Indian community in South Africa saying that for truth and ahimsa you have to know to suffer. These days we have forgotten about this. No wonder that Nelson Mandela said you sent a barrister to South Africa and we returned a Mahatma Gandhi. That is Mr. Mohan Das And by the time he is wise, he has and the second crisis now that I am going to talk about, which Mohan saw at the age of 43 and wrote in Hindu Swaraj and I quote, let us first consider state of things. He was a critic of modernity. Let's remember the modern industrial civilization about which we are practically mad today. He, is, he was only against the madness and just listen to him. Let us first consider what state of things is described by the world civilization. Its true test lies in the fact that people living in it make bodily welfare only sharira, the object of their life. The people of Europe today live, now read India, because this was 1909, this is 2019, 110 years. Don't read Europe, read, read India, we. The people of Europe today live in better built houses and they did than they did 100 years ago. This is considered an emblem of civilization and this is also a matter of promoting bodily happiness. Formerly, they wore skins and used spears as their weapons. Now, they wear long trousers and for embellishing their bodies, a variety of clothing. Now, if this is, everything will be done by machinery. Formerly, when people wanted to fight with one another, they measured between them their bodily strength. Now, it is possible to take away thousands of lives, Gandhi wrote, by one man working behind the gun, and I am now adding, by one man sitting behind the button. Is you, do you call this civilization? Gandhi asked this then, and I am asking the young generation now, do you call this civilization? He was not wrong. He was not the only person. A feminist scholar named Germain Greer in 1999 wrote a piece and listened to this. That why it is Gandhi was so much worried about the body focus. The UK beauty industry takes beauty industry takes away 8.9 billion a year out of women's pockets. Magazines financed by beauty industry teach little girls how they need makeup and train them to use it so to establish their lifelong reliance on beauty products. Not content with showing pre-teens still in the school, the girls they danced, how to use foundations, powder, concealers, blushers, eyeshadows, eyeliners, lip liners, lipstick and lip gloss. The magazine identifies problems of dryness, flakiness, blackheads, shininess, dullness, blemishes, puffiness, onlineness, spots, greasiness that little girls are meant to treat with moisturizers, fresheners, masks, packs, washes, lotions, cleansers, toners, scrubs, astringents, none of which will make the slightest difference and all of which will cut money and child does not know that it does. Pre-teen cosmetics are relatively cheap but within a few years 
more sophisticated marketing will have persuaded the most level-headed young woman to throw money away on alchemical preparations containing biotin, ceramides, placenta extracts, silk to Kashmir, pearls, proteins, collagen, phytotensors, bisabolol, jojoba, hydrocaptors, serine and hydroclass acids, oleospirits, cornospheres, nanovectors, glycerol, anything real or phony that might fend off her imminent collapse into hideous disruptive. Now this is what it means. The fight today is about increasing the GDP. What is GDP? Falsic. Why? Because doctors will treat you. They will take money from you. So go and eat any food that you want so that you fall sick. So that doctor earns. If the doctor earns, everybody earns. So when everybody earns, the GDP goes up. So again, food industry is promoted. Eat this, eat that, fancy foods. Okay. Now this is what Gandhi said is detrimental. And this is the body focus he was talking about. He was not wrong. He was not an ecologist or environmentalist. But we are facing the major crisis of the second crisis is out of this greed and out of this need to only service your body, we are now struck. So therefore, vast humanity across the globe has embarked on the path of acquiring limitless material prosperity and is stuck with serious environmental and ecological crisis. Uncontrolled desire of acquiring material prosperity has multiplied violent conflict, destroying peace. The world has got tired of employing all known techniques of war for gaining peace. Gandhi returns now. Thank you.